What's up guys and welcome back to the Try Time Podcast. I'm Matt and you join me for another one of our Team 1 to 17 series. If you've not seen any of the previous ones, we've so far done Wigan, Warrington and Leeds and today is the turn of St Helens. Just a quick thing before we start the video, we are of course doing a giveaway at the moment where if we get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, then we will be giving away to one lucky subscriber a Rugby League shirt for 2025 season of their choice. So whatever club, whatever home away or principal also, whatever crap the clubs want to call them this year, it's your pick. Without further ado then, let's jump into today's video. Now, as we said in the others, this is not necessarily, outside of the starting 13, the bench is not necessarily fully functional as a bench in game settings, but rather for the players who are most unlucky to miss out on a spot in the actual main 13. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. And my St. Helens fullback of all time, well, I should probably say of the Super League era at least, because we can't go on to like the 1900s, otherwise this would be impossible to narrow down. But of the Super League era, it is, of course, Paul Wellens. And this should come as no surprise. The one club man made just under 500 appearances for Saints in Super League competition. 230 tries, over 1,000 points in total. Wellens, of course, now St. Helens coach, where he's certainly come under a lot more pressure than he was as a player, despite having a 67% win rate. Wellens undoubtedly won pretty much everything there was to win. He even made it into the Great Britain side where Chris Redlinski was absolutely dominant in terms of the starting name at fullback, getting spells on the wing and ultimately eventually establishing himself in and around that team. For Wellens, he won, like we say, everything. He competed in World Cup Challenges, won the grand final his second season from the bench against Bradford in ninety nine, again fullback in O two. Also against Bradford, just putting that in there to rub against Callum. And despite injuries towards the back end of his career, the former Saint captain was still a key part of the team. Ultimately, retiring at the end of 2015 after a long-standing hip injury. And of course, going into coaching since then. He has, of course, five Super Leagues, five Challenge Cups, two World Cup Challenges, a Man of Steel, a Lance Todd, a Harry Sunderland Trophy and a four-time Super League Dream Team inductee. Of course, he even won the World Club Challenge as a coach. So, it's pretty hard to argue against giving Wellens a spot, really. He starts at fullback. Now, I won't go through these teams every single year that have won the same thing. And a man who shared a lot of Wellens' success towards the later end of his career is Tommy Makinson. The winger, initially from Wigan, actually, quite interestingly, has again, bar a couple of loan games, spent his entire career at St Helens with over 300 games so far and over 200 tries for the club. Makinson, a St Helens and England international, a former World Golden Boot winner, and a man who's... Scored hat tricks a plenty for club and country. Let's be honest, it's his golden boot that kind of stands out here. Winning that award over the likes of what James Tedesco, Dallin Watins, Lesniak. There were some massive names in contention. Yet it was Tommy Mack who came strong, and ultimately he will leave St Helens, of course, at the end of this season to join Catalans, and that will be a massive loss for Saints. And it's going to be really interesting to see who they replace him with. But, yeah, Tommy Merkinson, definitely a club legend and will go down, especially post-retirement, as one of, if not the best winger to ever compete for St Helens in Super League. It's going to take some beating. Well, we've had a couple of St Helens Academy products so far as team. However, we're going into the centre and we are going to change that up by a man known better as Killer, and that is... The Aussie from New South Wales is Jamie Lyon. The man who debuted at Parramatta spent just two seasons in Super League. 63 games, 46 tries and generally one of the best overseas imports of all time. He went back to the NRL following them and made over 200 appearances at Manly, which says a lot about the level he was performing at at the end of his Super League stint. It was, what... 
a goal kicking victory in success in 2006 when Saints beat Hull FC in the final. And whilst he didn't really spend too much time there to get uh, any much more of a legacy at St Helens, he was at the time the only fourth, no, at the time the fourth ever non British player to win the Super League Man of Steel in 2005, which, of course, his first season in Super League. How many times have we seen big name Aussies come and take a while to adjust? Not with Lyon. He'd ultimately play until 2016 in the end, and, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't kept away from UK Shaw forever. Of course, losing his next game in the UK, which was the 2011 World Club Challenge to my club Leeds, and I... Sorry, Saints fans, I did still have to shoehorn a Leeds victory in there because I need something to cling on to because I'm blooming desperate right now. But, yeah, Jamie Lyon in the centres and one of Saints' best players of all time. Joining him there, we're going back to the English Saints Academy products and another man who has spent his entire career there, and that is Mark Percival. Debuting just two years after Tommy Merkinson in 2013, he shared pretty much an identical honours list. And again, the goal kicking centre is a shoe in here. He's been a bit of a scapegoat this season for them, but let's not gloss over the fact he's achieved what? 230 games, 120 tries, over near 1,200 points for the club. He, despite his poor form at times, which I don't even think is that bad. I think he just goes under the radar a lot of the time. He is still one of the best players to ever do it at St Helens. And I think you would struggle to find a much better Saints centre pairing than this fictional one of Jamie Lyon and Mark Percival. Because what a combination that is. Sticking on Percy's wing then is the next overseas import into this team. And... This was a tough choice because there were two names that came to mind. It's either Eddie Gardner or the man I have gone for, and that is Francis Melly. The Samoan NRL Grand Finalist on the wing for New Zealand Warriors came over to St. Helens in 2006, where he would stay for seven years, scoring 145 tries in that time and picking up over 500 points. Joining in 2006, he did ultimately win the grand final in his first season uh, and the Challenge Cup, in fact, because Saints did the double that year. And he topped that off then with another feat, 2007's World Club Challenge, beating Brisbane 18-14. And Melly just... His arrival seemed to be a catalyst towards Saints winning trophies. Three years at the club, three Challenge Cup medals, a grand final winner's ring and a World Club Challenge medal. He also, of course, featured in the 08 and the first of the three-peat defeats against Leeds Rhinos. It was a difficult time at this, around the end of his career with people starting to question whether or not he still had what it took to play for St Helens and he did ultimately decide at the end of the 2013 season to depart, going on to Salford. But you know, that was his kind of his swan song, really. And, yeah, for Melly, he was certainly probably one of the more underappreciated players in that team, despite everyone knowing how good he was on his day. And, ultimately, that's why he got into the Exiles team in, what, 2011-12 as well? Because we know that they had quite a large selection of Aussie imports to go for, and yet he still made the cut. Going into the halves then, and I'm going to go for a much old school name here, and that is Tommy Martin, who is the first player to span the Super League era between 92 and 2003. The Irish international, again, over 200 appearances for the team, and it's fair to say with rugby in his genes, it was not surprising that he really made the grade. Winning grand finals in 99, World Cup Challenge appearances in 2000, he was a regular in the halves and there's a reason why his entire career at St Helens spanned, what, 11 years before ultimately having a swan song at Lee and then calling time. He was just generally that good and again, being that little bit before 
the St. Helens super teams where people think of like Leon Price and Sean Long, who, spoiler alert, will be selected at seven, is kind of put under the radar a little. And it was important that I think we gave him a bit of a shout out because definitely outside of the St. Helens fans that were around watching the games at that time, he's often forgotten. As we just said then, joining him in the halves is Sean Long, or as we will affectionately call him from now on, Longy. Despite coming up through the Wigan Academy, it is certainly St Helens where he became a legend, spending 12 years and scoring over 2,500 points from the, for the club. It was certainly as well Saints where he really shone, having never really got it broken through at Wigan. Had a quick spell at Widness where again he featured, but it wasn't really at that same level, and ultimately post Saints, spending a couple of years sporadically appearing for Hull, before, what, he tried his hand at Union, then went into coaching, of course, spending time at Featherstone and Oldham as, well, head coach, and of course at Leeds for a little while as the assistant. It was a career, like we say again, that was littered with honours. I won't go through the list, but, yeah. The former Great Britain International won everything that Saints did in that time and he was frankly one of the key reasons why they were able to transition in the early 2000s into being the dominant team in Super League. The reason why they got back on top in 06 and kept that momentum up with, what, four successive grand final appearances? And then, what, have it after a year off in 2010, I believe... Back in 2011, in fact, did they even make it in 2010? It might have been a Saints-Wigan final, thinking about it. In fact, yes, it was. So, what's that? A run of six grand final appearances? You don't do that without consistent quality, and that is certainly what Sean Long provided. We're going to move into the pack now, because I'm conscious we are nearly a quarter of an hour into this video, and we've still only covered seven players. So, let's speed this up a little and go for the most obvious selection here, and that is the Saints Academy product, James Graham. A man who, again, a key part of St. Helens, stint at the top through the mid-2000s into the early 2010s, went on to forge a fantastic career in the NRL with Canterbury and later St. George, and after a quick cameo back at St. Helens in 2020, funnily enough, won the grand final in the only Super League grand final to ever be played outside of Old Trafford. And, yeah, I don't need to say any more, James Graham was a shoe-in. Which, speaking of shoe-ins, and a man who needs me to say very little, 550 appearances, 117 tries, probably the best in his position to ever play in Super League. It is, of course, the 20-season career of James Roby. And do I need to say more? The starting hooker for a number of years in Saints consecutive finals. The starting man and one of the key workhorses of the 4 Pete, And, yeah, eight Super League titles, four Challenge Cups, seven Dream Teams, two Harry Sunderland Awards and a Man of Steel. He's got the he's Super League's record appearance holder. Yeah, Roby's in. I don't need to say any more. Fantastic player. Second prop, and I've gone for the West Yorkshire man, Alex Wormsley. Picked up from Batley in the early days of his career and just shy of 300 appearances later. Wormsley is still going at St. Helens, albeit with injuries recently. He has found himself out of the team a little more. The England and Great Britain International is a key part of this St. Helens rebuild following the five, yeah, five successive grand final defeats going on to win four in a row. And that has been that foundation has been built on players like Alex Warbles who've embedded into the club and really pushed them forward. And yeah, easily for me gets into this team as the second prop. Again we're going to go for someone who spans the Super League era and that is Chris joins in the second row. Another man who started out at Oldham before moving to Saints in 92 alongside Mr Long and making just shy of 400 appearances for St Helens. Joint got 121 tries. However, there is one in particular that he is 
incredibly famous for. And actually, let's be honest, it's not even him that people remember. Because it was, of course, Chris Joint who finished off the infamous Wide to West try. And the fact that that's what we're talking about is almost actually an understatement to the rest of his career because he was a solid, strong forward who represented his country in both GB and England and he, well and Ireland as well at international level, playing all across the pack at prop, second row, loose forward. Yeah, the Wigan-born second rower is ultimately one of that era's greats and, again... We probably don't recognise that enough now that it's nearly 20 years ago. And by that one piece of famous commentary, we don't really hear much of him mentioned outside of those St. Helen fans. So definitely one that we should consider more. One man who we do hear a lot of, albeit it's moaning largely about his Sky punditry, is John Wilkin. And the KR Academy product... Moved to St. Helens in 2002, spending, what, 16 years there? Over 400 appearances later, before departing off to Canada for the Toronto Wolfpack adventure. Wilkin enjoyed his success at the club around the mid-2000s, was a key part of the team that got to Old Trafford consistently, and almost unfairly for his impact at the club, his... Departure kind of tied in with when Saints went on their rampant run and won four in a row, which, whilst I think we can all agree the time was definitely running out for Wilkin in terms of his playing career by that point, it's a pity he couldn't have lasted a year or two on the bench just to pick up those extra couple of grand final wins that, to be honest, his career probably deserved. It's certainly fair to say he's caused a bit more controversy whilst being on Sky as a pundit, particularly towards whoever St. Helens are playing that day. But from an on-pitch perspective, Wilkin has to go in. And the final starter who will take the 13 shirt is Paul Sculthorpe, the MBE who, again, played all over the park, really, but predominantly as a 13 he again was around, joined St. Helens in the late 90s, stayed till 2008, winning Super Leagues, competing in World Club Challenges, winning World Club Challenges, Challenge Cups, the bunch. And, of course, was in the first ever Super League Dream Team. So, we're representing all the way back to Super League 1. And, yeah, Skullthorpe's in. The Burnley Bourne forward is, well, what? Shoeing? I think we've said it a few times again. And let's just remember, Super League in the early 90s wasn't big on transfer fees. Adjusted for inflation, well, not even that. He was signed for nearly 400 k at the time, which last time it was calculated was probably around 10 years ago when it was over half a million pounds. With the way it's gone since then, that's probably closer to like 800 k now in today's money, which... If we saw a player move from Warrington to Saints for that money now, we would certainly be raising a lot of eyebrows. And the fact that they paid that and still got their money's worth is a testament to what he has achieved. Moving on to the bench, and we will go through these ones even quicker. We're going to start off with the youngest player in the team, the man who was born after half of these trophies from the previous players were won, is, of course, Jack Wellsby. Breaking through... A year or so before the before the fall really started, Wellsby, as of course we all know, is one of the best fullbacks in the league, having also featured at centre and in the halves, particularly for England as well, where he was probably one of the bigger shining stars of the previous World Cup. And it's no coincidence that Wellsby's bursting onto the scene has coincided with Saints winning four in a row because he's Undoubtedly the best fullback since Paul Wellens to play for that team. And that is no disrespect to the likes of Lance Hire who have held the number one shirt in the intermediary. And also considering the likes of Lachlan Coote and Ben Barber and Wellsby's the one that's made more of an impact says a hell of a lot about what he's achieved. Joining him is the, well, I think the only London-born player in this, and I couldn't not include him. It's the St. Ellen Starwart, Louis McCarthy, Scarsbrook. Just under 400 appearances across 12, 13 seasons with them. It's 
it has to be. I could not ignore the impact that he had over such a long time in and around that St. Helens start in 13. I don't think he quite had the same necessarily ability as those guys who we've mentioned before him, but he was a workhorse and he did the mucky stuff so well and got under the skin of his opponents. And for that, I'm going to award him the way that he often did best for St. Helens, and that is being a player to bring on off the bench and really steady the ship in the mid in the middle of the park. Next up, we're going to go for TP, and that is, of course, Tony Pulitua. A much shorter stint at St. Helens, only there for five seasons, and actually one of the few players in this to not win a grand final with them. The prop and second rower was... Certainly an appearance maker at Old Trafford, twice losing out to the Rhinos in 2009 and 2011. He would go on to extend his stay in Super League for uh, another year or two with Salford and later Hull KR. But it wasn't really a successful time compared to his stint at St. Helens, where he's still very fondly remembered as a real prop that gave them go forward and he had the ball handling to cause problems too. Yeah, pull a tour, you're in the team. And to finish off, we're going to go for the older brother to the former Warrington halfback, Kurt and Matt Gidley. The Newcastle-born, well, Aussie, I should say, Australian Newcastle, came over towards the back end of the 2000s and was, again, a key part of St. Helens making four grand finals in a row under him, albeit they did lose all four of those. That certainly wasn't down to Gidley particularly, however, and he did a great job in terms of steadying the ship when he came on as a replacement for Jamie Lyon. I think part of that was probably much more of a number six or five eighth, as the Aussies call it, in junior level, and then coming over as the replacement centre when Lyon, of course, went to Manly. He did win the World Club Challenge over there, beating Brisbane, and a Challenge Cup final victory over Catalans in 2007 and you know he got himself into the dream team which says a lot of actually he was still a big part of the success in that team he did ultimately go back to Newcastle Knights in a behind the scenes role towards the end of his career and was former CEO of the club but yeah that is my 17 obviously I'll have potentially missed some that you guys would have put in equally there's probably some of you are thinking, why the hell has he put them there? But by all means, let me know your thoughts on that in the comments, guys. And also, we've done the big four now. Let me know what team you want to see next, and we can certainly try and deliver that. As a reminder, subscribe if you haven't already. Get as close to 1K, and you might be the lucky one that wins the shirt. And stick around for all the rest of the Saturday stuff and the main pod. And that's it, I think, guys. So thank you for sticking with this, and until next time... Goodbye.